What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Boyd, and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the blue color, playing as Hades. His name is Kavoth. His opponent today in the red color, playing as Oranos. His name is Matrius. And before you say, yes, we have seen this matchup quite a bit, but have you ever seen this matchup from this angle? Normally, we're seeing Kavoth playing the Uranus, maybe Matrius playing the Hades, but flipping the script now. We'll see how things are going to go. As the Katarski Pilots get in the scouting, and we do start to see what this map is going to be about. The deer on this position here. Very, very nice. Very, very nice with the deer there. Uh, that's going to be a big help. Though the towns that are not quite close enough to it. Now, let's talk a little bit about theory in this matchup. For, the, for, a little, for a little bit of time here, I was starting to believe that maybe Hades is just unbeatable from the Uranus perspective, if the Hades player plays at a decent level, I'm not even saying a perfect level, just a decent level, and they play into their, um, play, play to make sure they don't lose rather than making crazy plays. Just don't don't make crazy plays. Play to not lose, right? I was thinking that Hades is unbeatable. Now, what I think has been the problem in this matchup, and I think in general for Uranus players, and, and I hate to say this because I was so sick of this meta way back when it was in, in the game, but I think that if you're playing against a Greek player who goes for a far second town center, you're obligated as the Uranus player to open double counter barracks. There it is. That's the opener. Now, it's not as simple as just open double counter barracks, just spam Terma for the rest of the game, and you win. It's not that simple, but that is the opener you should be going, and let me explain why. Terma move at 5.5 speed. 5.5 speed, speed Terma dodge the Sentinels of the Hades player. That means you can get in and you can get damage on the hometown center. They also dodge the arrows in the main base of the Hades player who gets watchtowers out. You dodge those, you get damage in onto the main base. So what doesn't dodge these arrows? Mermillo. And why have we been seeing so many Mermillo being made in this matchup? Well, it's just good to have Mermillo because Terma are trash units. So in the end of all the theory crafting, and we'll see if Matrius is gonna go this way. In the end of all the theory crafting, what Really, what we're trying to say here is, if you open double terma and you start thinking about maybe getting Mamilla a little bit later, maybe getting your town centers a little bit earlier than you otherwise would, those sorts of ideas, that might find you some victories in this match. If you're struggling with it from the Uranus perspective, give the double terma a go yet again and see how you go. Ah, in the middle of the map, we do see the Hunk of Ra. This is a great relic for both players here. Definitely important where that's concerned. Want to be picking that one up uh, most of the time. There's a temple coming up here for Gavoth in his main base. He might be looking to grab that one nice and early. Uh, another relic will be on this map somewhere. Let's take a quick look at it because why not? It is the Shingles of Steel. Not the most of important relics there, but... Extra house in point, hit points is always going to be nice. As we see Kavoth already protecting his wood line here. Love that play, though. Uh, you can still get hit with this one with some Terma Raids on this position here. You can see it's open, so hitting in over in this little location there. Attacking those villages would not be a bad idea in the slightest. As the Kadoska boss scouting around, still trying to figure out what sort of a strategy should Kavoth go for. Because here's the thing. Grabbing this town center gets you nothing. Well, get you a back gold mine, actually. This makes this well and truly worth it to grab. He's got Walrus here he can drag in. I was thinking maybe that's a little bit far away, but this town center is great for Kavoth. He's going up through Athena. We see Prometheus coming through for Mattress. No surprises where that's concerned. How many villages on wood on food here, excuse me? Two villages on food. Oh, he's going for a he's going for a very fast advance time here. Did he have hunting dogs? Yes, he did. Military bags is up though. So this is kind of that old meta that I was talking about. With um with Atlantean going for Mamillo, going for Terma. 
I don't, I don't think this is the best way to open. I think obviously you want the military barracks later, but I don't think this is the best way to open as the villagers now coming in onto this town center. The oracles checking this one out, sneaking this position beautifully as those oracle heroes searching. We do see the villagers getting pulled off of that gold mine nice and early. Moving over here, they can grab boars. They can get onto this back gold mine there as well. Villagers here need to, uh, well, they want to put the town center up. They will have a handful of food in their pockets there as the oracles still searching around. At this point, Mattress feels like he's denied this town center because he feels like the villagers just left. But in actuality, I don't know. They snuck over here and what can Matrius do now? He's now bringing his oracles back to check the town center out. There is nothing going on there. We see the Chiron started. The Minotaur in the main bay is going to be able to defend against those uh, Promethean offspring there. As the oracles don't even spot the town center. They don't even care. There's no attempt here for Matrius to deny this town center. As the Promethean offspring come through, a bit of a shank does manage to snick one of those Promethean offspring. And snick right there is a technical term. Uh, I'm sure you guys appreciate that one. I, I don't know what I was trying to say there in all honesty. I'm making I'm making stuff. I don't know. Making words up. It's, it's what we do. It's what we do. All righty. As more walls are coming up here. Chiron moving up onto this position. Town center now up. Matrix going to be shaking his head. Why wasn't he over there? He had no idea which location to go for. Sentinels now up. Walls coming through here as well for Kavoth, but he doesn't quite have the gold to finish this wall off just yet. And look, there you go. First blood, in a way, drawn there with those Sentinels and the Ajax carrying this Unk of Ra. Get that one back into the temple, my friend. Uh, and also get your get your towers nice and safe would be very important here. As uh, Matrius searching around, what's the next play here? More units just pumping out for Mattress. No town center just yet. He is going for what seems to me to be a full send Uranus strategy here. As the Ajax searching over here, looking for uh, a little bit of damage himself. Coming forward, going to start shooting these oracles down here. As Kavoth can just dive in and out of this uh, location as much as he wants. Does he have any upgrades through? Still no upgrades in. A little bit surprised to see that as we see watchtowers coming through. Wouldn't mind seeing a villager getting over here and putting the walls down around the tower, but not yet going to happen. A shockwave onto these villagers would not go astray here, and he does. That's brutal. That is so brutal. One, two, three, four, five, six villagers getting sent over that wall there, but only three really going to be going down as the other ones do manage to get back. But even so, that's a huge amount of idle time force there as the army of Kavoth going to come over here and get a little bit of damage done here to try and defend as the Oracle Heroes going to get onto this Minotaur good micro here from Kavoth thus far. Gets a little bit of path blockage action, getting a little bit more damage done onto these units that are trying to retreat back. Good play from Matrius but Kavoth gets back his watchtower is now up his wall up on this position is up he's happily been eating these walrus for a good uh, little bit of time there as the uh, oracles getting cleaned up there as well and now Matrius he's got to start thinking about something else here it's 10 citizens to 30 villages Kavoth is only getting further and further in front of Matrius in terms of economy in this game and with all the gold mines, it's double gold mines here in the main base, plus a back gold mine on this town center. Kavoth could not have asked for a better map here for his Hades in this game. Hoplites, Toxod is coming out. No surprises there. This is the uh, somewhat unbeatable army. Uh, though you can kind of beat it with Mass Sater, and you can kind of fight it uh, with, with Destroyer Arcus. But in the classical age, life is quite tough against this army, which uh, which Kivoth is going to be constructing here. Walls coming up over here as well, as Kivoth looks like he has managed to make himself nice and safe. Now getting himself hand axe. Wouldn't mind seeing pickaxe as well. As the walls getting broken down, Kivoth about to uh, get his villagers pushed off of these walrus for the first time. Pushed off his hunt. For the first time, pulling away. He does have, looks like he's got food down here as well. There's only two deers there, luckily. That's not that big of a deal as the villagers coming back over here. Mattress not able to do any damage here as he pulls away. Wall's coming back up onto this position here as well. We do see some units coming in. Going to get some good damage done onto the uh, onto the stray villager here. Managing to pick off at least one there is, is a big win as the hero Mamillo, no, hero... 
Terma going after that uh, that Minotaur. There's 75 HP remaining as the army pushes forward. Going to attempt to take out the Minotaur here as well. Does manage to snipe that one down. And then he's going to be pulling back. And now we see the town center up for Mattress. An 8 minute, 52 second town center here. This is um, Cyclone-esque play from way back in like 2006. We've got a history lesson here now, ladies and gentlemen. XPT Cyclone. Probably the first of the great Aranus players in Age of Titans history. His game plan, and I think I may have even made a video on it at some point. Maybe it was Army Corps who I made this video on. This is what Cyclone was doing. He would go full pop, two town centers, full pop, Titan Age. That was his game plan. And this is kind of what Mattress is doing. Though he's not got the next town center coming up just yet. He's looking like he's aiming for that next age here. Maybe wanting to, to get to that heroic age a little bit faster. 600 food, 300 gold in the bank. He's about to be out of goats. So it makes sense that he wants to just advance here. Uh, as the town center will come through. Getting out to this hunt is going to be vitally important as well in the center of the map. The fact that Matrius has been on the offensive for the entirety of this game, but not eating hunt here, is hurting him considerably here. We see pickaxe coming through. The villagers get stopped here, and it looks like he's going to be able to advance nonetheless. Uh, as Kavoth is quite a ways away from advancing. But here's the thing. If you can sniff out this advance time as the Hades player, there's this huge timing. Because even if Mattress hits the Heroic Age and he's going through Thea, so it's even more of a thing with this, there's no great immediate help here if you're getting attacked. So if Kavoth wants to put the foot on the gas here and just go and attack, he's probably going to be rewarded for it. This villager does get caught out yet again. as so He gets the wall finished off but loses the villager. Meanwhile, on this position over here, the Oracle Hero is going to get taken out by that hoplite there. Has not that much hack armor, but it's working out for him in a way as the wall's getting broken down. Gavoth wanders up here. And that's just going to just get out of there. Pickaxe, Vault of Erebus, more military barracks coming through. What Mattress might want to consider here is diving the, the main base here and just trying to snipe villagers off with his Terma. Because he doesn't, you don't really want them anymore. Obviously, if you can pick off some military units, pick off some villages, that's great. But trading those off, then then um, replacing them with the with the Arcus and the destroyers as you hit that heroic age. As we see the second age now in tree now down, Hesperid's tree down, and the Dryads are going to be popping out here. But how does he break through this base? Is the big question. Kavoth says, "What? You just advanced? Can't I just attack now?" And that's exactly what he's doing. He's pushing forward. Medium infantry, medium archers coming through. Spreads his units out there in an attempt to dodge the shockwave. Still no fortress or palace up here, I should say, for Matrias just yet. Arcus starting to be produced. Matrias' economy here, or population, 100 population, 130 population. Good micro to pull back here, trying to get a little bit of damage done. But he's a ways away from being able to win these fights. Because the other thing is that these Arcus, they might seem like a good option. But 6.6 .6 damage versus... 7.8 damage. Yeah, you got more range, so you can start fighting a little bit earlier, but oftentimes that's not really what happens. As Kavoth is sniffing out this town center coming up, he's like, no, no, no. You don't get the town center. We say no to this. And Mattress tries to pull his citizen away. Will he get back to his army or not in time is the big question. More units up on this position need to get back here and try and defend and get his own town center up. He could kind of move forward and try and sneak this forward town center up, which is probably the better idea in all honesty because it would allow him to, um, to get a four to two town center advantage. As the Symphalian Bird going to come through, Dryads coming in on the back. Those will tank really nicely here as all that Mattress wants here in this fight is to snipe out that Chiron so his myth units can get some good damage done. But while this is going on, Matrius's micro onto those Toxodes is working out incredibly well here. But Aphrodite has clicked up. The unit's pushing forward here. The uh, Stymphalian Bird getting targeted down here. His Restoration does end up getting dropped down as well. This is going to make it very tough here for uh, Mattress to actually win this fight as Kavoth. Trying to clean this up here. We do see the Terma getting taken out nicely. But the Restoration down. Still decent population here for Mattress. And Kavoth has to get out of there. Townsend are going to be coming up. Reinforcements coming through. Hades Shades now coming in as well. Uh, the, the the spawn rate of Hades Shades in, in uh, patch 5.0 is every 
Five units you lose, you get one Hades Shade. Uh, so they come out pretty quickly as the army swinging around here. We do see a uh, Stymphalion Bird trying to cause problems for Kavoth here as well. As the army coming in, going to clean up some units in the center of the map. That's going to be a big help. Do we see any palaces here? No palaces. Matri is getting a little bit distracted with his citizens here. Town center still not up as the villagers are going to be sneaking this town center. But there's already a dryad down here. As he spots these villagers here, he's going to start whacking away at those ones. And I'm sure he's going to be immediately moving down to that position to stop that town center from going up. I don't think this is really a necessary town center. I think if Kavoth could get... Mythic Age here, which I do believe he would easily be able to get Mythic Age without too many problems here. He should be doing that. As we see the units pushing up, trying to cause some problems over here. <laughs> Girls getting dropped down. This will allow that Kion to kill everything off, and this Townsend is still not going to be going up here. But uh, looks like the Dryads will clean up all the rest of those units. So this citizen comes in and how does he deal with this? He needs to get some units back up there to deal with that Chiron. But the villagers are cleaned up over there. And this is technically a win for Kavoth. The longer you can delay this town center, the better. Uh, this citizen over here with 90 HP. He could ult S that in a way and he's trying to get the town center back up. But just going to be sending some, maybe send some Arcus back or something. It's still a very, very close game here. As Kavolf pushes forward, we do see some great micro there from the Stymphalion Bird, able to snipe down that Nemean line nice and easily there. As a uh, Mamillo getting path blocked by a pig, running in and get some damage done. Can this town's going to get up though. I mean, 74 HP citizen could be close. You see a turn, we're going to come in and start tanking, or at least getting some damage done. Which one does he target here? Alex the Termo. So the town center will be finished off as the units are pushing forward here for Kavoth trying to deny this one. Old S! Old S! Come on! Matrius! Matrius! Old S! 40 HP! 33 HP! Gets the town center up. As the citizen gets pushed back, he can garrison and he does manage to do so. Not only that, Contari is starting to come out for Mattress as well. Hephaestus on the way for Kavoth. I think this is the right way to play from Kavoth's perspective. You don't need the town center. He has used his, um, he has gone for Aphrodite, which I think is maybe another mistake. Simply just sitting two town centers and going for a, a timing attack on a third town center where your opponent isn't against Atlantean is a very, very simple way to find an advantage as Hades. You just sit back and do nothing. And you can let your opponent grab four town centers or go three town centers, rush Mythic Age, no problems. You just deal with the Tartarian Gate and then you go and undermine a town center and find uh, an advantage there or find equality there. Especially with all the gold mines available here. There's also a beautiful trade route at the top corner there, which uh, both players can actually have access to. So I think that Mattress kind of doing himself a little bit of a disservice by not getting in on that corner and, and blocking that one off. As the Dryads pushing forward. The Achilles is going to get some good damage done here, but no Chiron in this fight just yet. He needs to get that Chiron back to deal with the Stymphalion Bird over here. Heavy infantry coming through for Kavoth. Hecate now on the way for Mattress. A little bit, I mean, it's not really late, but a little bit late there. Maybe it would be better to not go Hecate and instead be going for a Helios idea in this game, especially if he's got access to the fourth town center. Helios giving access to the Hecate Gigant. He's getting access to the, the Siege upgrades. Maybe you're going to be able to cause some problems here with like a Vortex over here. You can garrison a handful of units and just use like a Vortex raid. It's not a terrible idea. You just like garrison 20 units inside of your town center, Vortex onto this position with 10 to 20 units. Pick off some villages, push off the gold, grab this town center, defend that one as well and make that work. But we'll see how things are going to go as Forge of Olympus immediately clicked up here. Fortified town centers. Heavy archers coming through in the main base here. Plenty Vault. Colossus is in as well. No easy ways to kill that without the Lampedi coming through to deal with that one. And how is Matrius's actual upgrades? Look, zero upgrades. He's getting a citizen into the corner to drop that market and start a trade out because he knows the only way forward here is to get a bonkers strong economy probably like 20 Llama Caravans, 25 Llama Caravans, to give him the resources he needs 
to uh to kind of survive as we do see Madras using the the shockwave to engage this fight underneath the palace there that's going to be a big big help Kavoth is throwing away a lot of units in this game. He's really given Matrius every opportunity to win this one. But pushing forward, taking the, the gold mine behind all of this with the fortress, that's good. He's still got a decent amount of gold in the main base remaining if he needs it as well. As the Mythic Age is hit now for Matrius. And can he get that... Uh, can he get that... Whatchamacallit in? It looks like he's going to be eyeing down the temple for the time being with that Dryad. Uh, as his Matrius's Dryad is in position, but he's not utilizing the the thing. A little bit too uh, preoccupied over there, as he does utilize that onto the temple, denying any sort of easy uh, easy Colossus usage here. Also, no Masons just yet. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to grab that one, as Kavoth needs to click onto the Tartarian Gate. The lesson learned here, and he's going to lose so many villages. He finally works it out. You have to basically click it twice to get the villagers to kill the, the, the Tartarian Gate because it spawns and then there's a little bit of a delay and then you can attack it or then it resets for some reason. A little bit of a bug in the uh, in the in the Tartarian Gate code there as we do see the Gavoth heroes coming back. So many villagers going down here for Gavoth as he's going to desperately try and defend. He does have the Heliopolis out which are really, really strong. Champion archers also coming through for Gavoth as his archers are going to be so brutal here. Uh, in the defense and can the uh can the tartarian gate get killed off here we do see the masons has come through clutch here not focusing down that tartarian gate just yet as there he goes and that will be dealing with that gob power and obviously kavoth has still got the plenty vault so that's going to be a big help here as well as the <laughs> as the tartarian spawn comes in jumps in onto the villagers the villagers turn around checking down he does get a villager kill does so much damage 15 dps there on the hack damage plus 20 dps on the crush damage it's a big amount there as temple down and achilles picks up the relic i've never seen achilles holding a relic look at that he looks cool after all the years i haven't seen it he's sup dudes good relic <laughs> These are really important objects, and he's just casually just like, yeah, I'm, I'm huge. But Madrid is now four town centers. He's got control of the entirety of the map here. But being on four town centers and having no trade, the problem with this is if Kvothe just takes trades here, Madrid, oh, he doesn't have plow either. Matt just needs to start a trade route. He needs to start a trade route yesterday. He's got it going now. This is the, the problem is that if the fighting starts and Matrius loses the fight in any which way, which he will because this is iron shields uh, versus or iron upgrades versus basically no upgrades here, life becomes so insanely hard for Matrius because he just doesn't have the economy to support the four town centers. 27 villages is just not enough. But the trade route is starting. We'll see if he's going to be able to make that work. Toxodes wandering forward here, going to attempt to snipe down these units. We do see that that Lampady causing some problems. I'm not sure what happened to old mate Colossus here uh, in this game. As the Matrius units trying to take down this forward base of Kvothe. Kvothe does have the opportunity to retreat away from here if he so chooses. He's got 65 villages plus a plenty vault. Still plenty of resources or income where that's concerned. But it does look like Matrius, look at this, he's down to 160 population already. Uh, Kvothe not focus firing his uh, his fortresses here all too well uh, just yet either as the uh, the trade route still pumping in. Where's that? Is that a Hesperus tree dropped somewhere? It looks like it was dropping both the Hesperus trees in the main base. Going to be pumping out those dryads just that little bit quicker. As Matrix just cannot afford this full population push, but he is keeping Kavot's population low here, which is going well for him. And this uh, Fire Siphon doing work here as well. Can Kavoth utilize his own Heliopolis to, de de to deny this uh, this fortress here? As he does, uh, Matrix is trying to drag that one back, not paying attention to the pathing issue, as it is very, very lost here. Units popping out for Kavoth. He's now back up to 170 population. Bronze weapons coming through as well. And it does look like Matrix has to pull back. He's up to six Llama Caravans now, slowly getting them up into that position where he can kind of deal with this. Thank you for the 37 months, Ties DF. My golly gosh, the support is unreal from you. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. 
As Matri's now going to be getting taken out on this position by these Teleopolis. Everyone always says, man, it's unfair. I've got four town centers. How am I not winning? The reason is, simply put, Armory upgrades are not in for Mattress. This is, and also obviously Hades late game. But Armory upgrades are not in for Mattress and he can't afford to get them because he doesn't have the economy. This is why I'm saying get those Llama Caravans in as fast as you possibly can. A second market wouldn't go astray. Putting the market in this corner so he's like getting more gold would not go astray either. Every little inch matters. Every little inch matters for uh, for for the for the for the trade route. And while Mattress is uh, known for his Mattress markets, uh, it, it's uh, never going to cut it. It's just a huge shockwave for literally every one of those units there. Uh, and Kavoth probably getting a little bit overzealous with this push here, but he does he is on a slight timer because Mattress is playing it correctly, and he's slowly getting himself those armory upgrades. And, and obviously a 180 population Mattress Oranos is going to be able to beat a 140 population Kavoth Hades if he's got full upgrades. As the Hades Shades do come through, uh, as I think the temple was just rebuilt there, as Kavoth wanted to kind of wait on that a little bit. They're all going to get sniped down late game. Hades Shades are not really that useful. Yeah, they cost one population, so they're, they're pretty good for their stats, but they're not the reason why Hades is strong in the late game. The reason why Hades is strong in the early game <laughs> as Kavoth going to be pulling back here. We were just jumping onto this gold mine here as well. Toxodes, uh, kind of a little bit limited here from Kavoth's angle. Part of me feels like the best army composition that Kavoth could be going for here is actually Toxodi, Heliopolae, Colossus. And why is this? Well, one, you can just take all the villages off of food. You can leave like six villages on food or something. So you do see this position is walled off. I like that from Mattress. You might need to get in here again and wall this better off. But you can go like eight, six to eight, ten villages on food. Thank you for the prime there, Crom. Appreciate you, my friend. Ten months. Appreciate it for the consistent support there. Uh, but if you get that, what was I saying? If you get that army composition, it can be really tough for anyone to deal with it. As this position now getting taken out, Matri is going to be defending it here. Iron Shield's coming through now for Mattress. That's going to be a big, big help. Uh, but he probably needs some destroyers here. These Fanatics are not generally not the best of units. It's the uh, Heliopoli pushing forward. Village is coming through here. Matrix has got some resources here. Could go for some Hero Citizens. The reason why Hero Citizens are good against Heliopoli isn't necessarily because they deal more damage. They don't really. It's a little bit. But they get access to Armory upgrades. Look at this. 60% pierce armor with 243 hp that's gigantic that is a ridiculous amount of uh of, of like what do you call it practical hp i don't know there's a ridiculous amount of hp there blood control coming through for mattress now as the market's still getting these trade caravans out and it does look like mattress now is able to float this 180 population. He needs to get more buildings down. He needs to get his upgrades in. Uh, and he's going to be in for a very, very good position here. As we can see that Kavoth is uh, constructed his own little chemo trader out here, going from the back corner to his to his second town center. So he's going to always have gold in this game, but he may need to... Uh, to kind of cut down on some villages here. Otherwise, things might go a little bit south for him. Thanks for the prime boring wall. Appreciate you, my friend. Thanks for coming and saying hi. Appreciate the support. Uh, as the Heliopolis breaking through these fire siphon here. And how are Mattress's upgrades? We're still lacking in the department of the damage upgrades. 8.4 damage per second from those Arcus to 11.5 damage per second. That's a big, big difference there in terms of damage. Plus, obviously, these Heliopolis are always going to be absolutely insane. There's more units getting taken out over here. And can Kavoth break through, get this town center dealt with? I wonder if this is... If you can build a dock here. Obviously, the uh, Gastrofeed is coming in, but they do not have... Burning Pitch just shit. Burning Pitch is a vital upgrade before you build Gastrofeed. Gastrofeed are useless before Burning Pitch. After Burning Pitch, they are worthwhile building. Uh, but yeah, before Burning Pitch, they are they're absolutely useless. Uh, so I don't know why Kavoth is going for them just yet, uh, just at this moment. Another way for... Um, I'm going to do some nice raids here onto the citizens. Another way for, for Kavoth to play this is get some side raids over here with those Gastrofeed, with, uh, with the upgrades and everything else. That can work out for him. As the uh, 
Heliopolite moving forward. Carpenter's now coming through for Kavoth as well to get himself a little bit more income here in this game as the unit's now gearing up to take this position down. Matrix does have full population, but it's all Arcus. And Arcus, it's not a bad composition to have this many Arcus at this point. The idea being you're getting these to get yourself the economy, to get yourself the armory upgrades. Because they trade decently even down at... Um, down armory upgrades. But after that, you need to have the units to deal with these Heliopolis. These Heliopoli here, he's trying to take them down. The town center is falling here, and this is exactly what Kavoth needs here as he manages to take Matrius's town center down. That's gigantic here. Can uh, Kavoth continue here in this game, though? Because what's going to happen? He's going to lose this gold mine in his main base. He's got this gold mine up. He's only got 11 really, really crappy Donkey Garavans. How much gold are they getting? That's not right. It can't be eight. He's getting himself 36 gold a trip, so it's very, very small on the economy here. Copper Mail now coming through. I don't think Matrius should be getting Copper Mail here. If he doesn't have bronze weapons get bronze weapons iron weapons here at this point no there's like hack damage isn't important here uh but that's fine as long as he's still getting those armor upgrades and he's got to focus on that that's fine copper uh coinage now coming through mattress is now going to be sitting in the position where he's got too much economy to support or too much economy for his army so we can get his his armor upgrades down really fast and then he's going to need uh, to do everything else as the villagers now sneaking through gonna try and get this town center up the buildings for mattress will see the villagers in so he's gonna know he needs to push forward and this does put Kavoth in a bit of a weird position trying to get this town center because he needs to fight but there's nothing really over here we do see the the champion uh Arcus coming in as a fortress going to come up on this position very smart to just not rush that town center just yet as we see a palace coming up there for Matrius as well wanting to control this one Arcus come through they see the villagers repair, uh, putting the fortress up but the Arcus are in and that does force Kavoth back for a hot, hot second there as now Matrius's bronze weapons coming through has he stopped trade route yes he has what else can he do though more siege weapons coming out the fire siphon are a good counter to Heliopoli. They deal 69 crush. The Kavoth uh, Heliopoli, Heliopolis has got 50% crush. So technically it's doing something like 35-ish damage per second against the Heliopoli, which is better than everything. Opolites deal 12 damage a second, minus 5%. Or whatever that is. I don't know. I don't know how math works. But take 5% off that... that Obviously, the Fire Siphon kills Siege. Siege kills Siege the best. Town Center up now, though, for Kvoth. Kvoth getting himself Iron Mail. Kvoth in a commanding position right now. He's still got a little bit of gold remaining over here. No, he's just out of this gold mine. He's moving forward onto this gold mine here. He's got all the Heliopoli he could want in the world. But the Fire Siphon are coming out to deal with these. Can Matrius make a push back here in this game and survive is the big question. Arcus coming through, taking villages down here. The other problem for Kavoth is he still doesn't have a decent trade route. Burning Pitch now coming through as well for Kavoth here. That's the Fire Siphon. Look at the damage coming in onto these Heliopolis. This is why I was saying that army composition. What's so important is Colossus. Colossus are important because they deal crush damage as well. How much is it? It's like uh, 50 crush damage there, which is gigantic. Obviously, 60% crush armor here for the fire siphon, but it's still a huge amount of damage going to be coming through. So you take them down very, very quickly, and it looks like Mattress has finally worked out how to deal with these um, these Heliopoli. But is it too little too late right now? We do see that, that we've got some... Uh, some Fire Siphon popping out of this palace straight onto the town center. Towers coming down here as well as Matris is setting up just a little bit behind here, which I love. But look at the gold income for Matris. He's got to start buying food, buying wood, and getting his uh, and using his resources here uh, in this position because Kavoth is keeping his resources low or he's forced to keep his resources low at this point. As Heliopolis does get taken down, units pushing forward, Toxody searching around, looking for the trade route, and Matrius, he is in a big amount of trouble here because Kavoth has sprung into action. He's finally been let out of his base. He's finally able to do what he does so well, which is just get in to your base so absurdly nicely and just cause so many problems for you. And this is a stop uh, to Matrius' trade route. Matrius got zero gold left in the bank. He's spent it all. He's sitting at 156 uh, population. All of these Llama Caravans getting 
uh, getting thwarted here, getting prevented from gathering at this point. Units retreating back away from this location here. For Heliopolis rolling through all over the place. Matrius' army still not full iron just yet, whereas Gavoth is full iron. He's still missing himself the champion infantry, but it doesn't matter because so too is Matrius missing that champion infantry here. As the, the fire side and pulling back, the guard towers on this position are helping Matrius out considerably here, but Matrius' trade route is done. He's moved his trade route over to the other corner here of the map. So he's still, he's, how many has he got? 13 Lama Caravans. Not the worst position in the world to be in. He does have a gold mine over here as well that he's gathering. So he's not out of this one just yet as the Fire Siphon moving forward. Going to be targeting down that Heliopolis first, I hope. There he goes after that one. But Palace Falls means no more uh, Fire Siphon to be tr uh, trained on this front just yet as the Citizen is taken out as well. Can the Town Center get taken down is the big question after all is said and done. And it looks like with the repair rate here, I think it might go down if uh, if Kavoth doesn't do something different. As the Ark is going to be searching around for something to take out. Guard tower is starting to get some good damage done. As the Fire Siphon pushing forward onto this onto this fortified town center. Units now coming through. It's going to be a close one here as the Hoplites come in. They can get some big damage done here. Thank you for the 16 months, Moradin. Appreciate you, my friend. And the town center does manage to fall here but yet again the trade route has been targeted down mattress completely disrespecting this no uh no wall set up on those positions the villagers though for Gavoth are in here as the army coming through for Matrius. He's got 160 population. He's pushing in. He's trying to take down these villages here as best as he can. The Mamillo coming through here as well to take out these villages. We'll see if he can uh, deal with them or not as the Toxodi starting to get some good damage done. But the town center looks like it will be getting finished up here unless Matrius has something else to say about it. And it well, maybe he does have something else to say about it. He's targeting the town center down well. These hoplites on this position getting targeted down by the guard towers as well. So those are going to get dealt with. Match is still at, at full population. His trade route, trade route is still working in this game as he sets this market up over here. He can always rebuild the market on this position. I need to see some walls up and some effort into defending the trade route there for uh, Mattress. And Kavoth also, take down this wall. Get this corner for yourself. This is a beautiful corner for him. He only has to pick off one wall and he can get a really nice trade route set up. But in the end here, it looks like the town center here is going to be Kavoth's for the taking as the Fanatics go down and Matrius looks like he's running out of steam here. Trying to break through the middle of the map. He can take out this fortress, but where's Kavoth's gold coming from? He's got 24 donkey caravans and a plenty of ult. He is fine here. He is fine. Three town centers. No problems for gold. He's still got this four gold mine as well. So long as he trades decently well, he's going to be completely fine here as Mattress pulling back. Do we see any attempt on this position again from Mattress? Can he send? He does have a palace up over here. He's got a citizen on this position here as well. His trade route is now back up onto this spot. Still no walls up. How many times is Kavoth going to move over there and punish uh, Mattress's trade route here? We also see... Uh, a um, bit of a mistake here with the llama caravan. No, never mind. They they're just moving in a weird, in a weird way. It is what it is. But the hand of Talos now coming through for Kavoth as he wants to make some of those, uh, some of those colossus out to push forward here. There is still titans remaining here for these players. Mattress, he's had the resources for some time to go. Well, not really had the resources in all honesty. But now it looks like he's attempting to get himself. No, he's getting himself iron weapons first. I like the idea before the Titan, get the get yourself some sort of uh, solid defense. A Titan is never going to be enough. We do see a Sky Passage coming down on this position here for Mattress to dive across the map. I would like to see a Sky Passage here as well, as here as well, as we see if Mattress can teleport across the map and get what needs to be done, done here in this game as the Heliopolis pushing forward, going to take out this position here. And the uh, Heliopolis, they see exactly what's coming for him as he's... Will he be able to stop the Sky Passage? And he does. He stops the Sky Passage. Not able to defend that one. But the units...
come through onto this position, hitting the back position, catching both me and Kavoth with our pants down as he's going straight after this town center with five fire siphons. Kavoth not paying attention there. He's still fighting in the main position over here. His town center is getting targeted down. The Arcus here need to be targeting down these villages because they will be able to shank those fire siphon down very, very fast. Mattress not paying attention there though as one fire siphon gets cleaned up. A second one going to be going down quickly after the Arcus finally start targeting this one down and Kavoth loses a town center he's pushing forward pushing off this gold mine there mattress has got his trade route fully in uh in full all gears say go and mattress has now can send his citizens into the sky passage anywhere on the map move forward put palaces down on this position will he be able to work this one out i do not know but we see walls up here and what this means is gash graffiti onto this town center which are going to be terrifying to deal with we also got stone gates in here Kavoth is not done in this game he's going to be able to get this town center back up in a heartbeat but what this does mean is his trade route is very very slow even more so as the uh, fire siphon attempts retreat back away from this position the arc is going to get some good damage done here uh, but this is the problem here towers coming up toxodes getting taken out Kavoth can we delete those toxodes in an effort to get this 99% gas graffiti out to start targeting this town center down but we'll see what's going to happen here as Matrius pulls back. Matrius has actually lost a mana somewhere here in this game. As the unit's pulling back, we do have the sky passages all across the map now to defend the trade route. So no problems where that's concerned as a Heliopolis pushing in onto this position. Town Center coming back up. And after all of the work there from Matrius, what does he do next? He's not pushing the pressure in the right positions here. Sky Passage up over here. I wouldn't have minded an attempt at a Sky Passage over here as well. So you could immediately take this Town Center down and then push this Town Center on the front, which you could probably target down a little bit easier there as the Heliopoli now pushing in onto this position, taking this Town Center out here as well. The Citizen can come forward and shank these down, but I mean... It's, he needs units back here, and he needs units back here fast. These Arcus are not cutting it on this position. Do we see a Sky Passage up here anywhere? No, not just yet. And we do see the market getting targeted down yet again here from Kavoth. He has been an absolute menace since this late game has started, targeting these markets down, closing the gap here in economy. He cleans this town center down. And Matrius in that position taps out. What an insane game here. Matrius just could not find the win. I I think two things. One is, if this market, literally, if this market was put on the corner here, I believe Matrius would have gone from what was like 75 gold. This one here is even better at 85 gold. If he puts it on the corner, he would have been hitting close to 100 gold, which might not seem like a, a lot, but it is. It really is a lot. Over the course of the game, you're going to be able to get yourself that bronze weapons upgrade. You're going to be able to get yourself that iron weapons upgrade. And I think that maybe, just maybe, once Matrius kind of realized what he needed. He needed those fire siphons out to deal with those Heliopoli, but he just didn't have the palaces. He didn't have the kind of thought process that an Arcus Ball's biggest weakness is five Heliopoli running at a town center. Just, they just can't defend it. And him losing this town center just means that now he's got to play out of his mind to find a victory. And he almost did. He took this town center down. He took this town center down, but it just was not enough. Gavoth up 2-0 to zero in this series. Look at it, kind of upset Mattress. Mattress being one of the um, kind of very, very best Asian mythology players, getting very far in tournaments. Obviously, this is a different tournament. It is random god, so to speak. So you can't use the past to judge the present here in this situation. It's a very different tournament. Uh, but Kavoth, he's showing up in this series. Mattress is going to have to dig deep, moving into game number three. We'll see if he can hold on here and make a series out of this one, or if Kavoth is going to prove to be too strong. If you guys enjoyed this game, enjoyed this series, enjoyed this tournament, please consider the follow on this, uh, on this channel. If you're on the Twitch, if you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.